No, I, uh, I don't think that uh, religion has been replaced by science. I don't even think that science has the potential to replace religion. The two really deal with two different realms. Science is an ascending form of knowledge that seeks to master the world of things. And religion is more of a descending approach to acquiring knowledge and it deals with the subjective realm, the realm of uh, consciousness as opposed to the realm of matter and it seeks to serve therein in that, in that realm. While science brings us a lot of knowledge, a very detailed knowledge about the objective world and gains credibility there, we shouldn't think that the descending approach of religion to understanding the subjective world is less uh, insignificant, mm -hmm. uh, given that that world is very elusive in comparison to the objective world of, of things. The fact that consciousness is elusive and uh, for that matter defies even a definition. It defies definition because there's nothing like it in the objective world to compare it to, which is how we uh, define things. Uh, that does not make it any less, as I say, tangible or uh, significant. Indeed, what it underscores for us is that consciousness is categorically different from, from matter, that it can't be reduced to matter. It is experience, if you will, or it has the capacity to experience. It is subjective first-person experience and matter is, by contrast, that which is experienced. It derives really meaning, and, uh, if you will, and value from consciousness. If matter, uh, matter doesn't matter in a sense, independently of, of consciousness. And out of the material realm, or out of matter, we're never going to get consciousness. You're not going to get consciousness, subjective experience, out of, uh, out of brain matter any more than you're going to get it out of uh, uh, billiard balls. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so that uh, methodology that uh, affords us understanding of consciousness is, uh, has to be a different met methodology than the objective methodology of, of modern science, a subjective uh, methodology. And that's really what g genuine spiritual practice is about. If, to use a generic term, we call it, let's call it yoga. Yoga is uh, also, I say generic because it's something that, um, that constitutes real and tangible spiritual practice that can be embraced by any, any, um, any, I don't want to say, uh, any, any conviction in the supernatural. And obviously there are different types of convictions in the supernatural, different religions, if you will those that are really ego-effacing, that seek to uh, distinguish ourselves and reality from a reality or a sense of self that's derived from identifying solely with the world of things um, is uh, a religion that's, that, that really has, has value and uh, constitutes, I would say, the, the larger circle in which um, the smaller circle of, sci of science uh, also uh, e exists. Um, 
so yeah, you know, science, yeah, it doesn't have the potential really to even uh, replace religion uh, when uh, when both disciplines are properly understood. Um, science and and science, as much as it seeks to subvert or reduce consciousness to matter really uh, it, it, it's self-defeating, pun intended. I mean, it, it seeks to destroy the sense of an enduring self, reducing experiential existence to matter, to a thing, and it makes, it, it destroys its own self as a discipline. Science really itself destructs because it becomes unreasonable, very uh, unreasonable. And uh, it then becomes no more really than a, than a belief system itself. Call it metaphysical naturalism. And uh, <laughs> metaphysical naturalism and its opponent, fundamentalist religion, uh, they belong in the same ring. Hmm? Uh, a circus ring, really, to uh, fight it out with, with one another. Uh, real religion, real uh, spiritual practice is uh, a different species altogether, I would say, in, in real sciences as well. And they do, as much as they're different disciplines, as I've uh, spoken about them, they nonetheless, I think, can have a common meeting point that, um, in which they, they complement one another. Science was, modern science was born really as a Christian in Europe. And in its youth, I would say it became a ag ag agnostic. And in its adult life now, it is mm, arguably becoming atheistic. But if it is to endure into old age and uh, afford us real comprehensive wisdom, it has to become a mystic. And this mysticism really is the ground, the common ground on which science and religion can meet and, uh, and as I say, complement one another. Therein, um, we would do, for example, science, and it's consciousness that does science, uh, of course. We would, do con we would do science, we would examine in whatever detail the objective world f primarily for the purpose of facilitating humanity's pursuit of plumbing the depths of the significance of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that kind of a science gives uh, real value to science and that kind of a religion then that, that uh, is informed well by science as to the na nature of the objective of the w world with the purpose, as I say, of facilitating the pursuit of consciousness becomes a religion that's then, well, well informed.